is Josh Savory. Uh, I'm a graduate student here at the National Superconducting Cyclotron Laboratory, and I work on the low energy beam and ion trap, which is the Levitt project. And what we specialize in is high precision mass measurements of rare isotopes produced here at the NSCL by projectile fragmentation. And that makes us unique because we're the only penny trap facility who utilizes beams produced in this manner. The big picture for our work is mass measurements can be used in a variety of different fields in physics. So specifically for nuclear physics, you can study the structure of nuclei far from stability. Such as for the measurement I did, you can look at the interaction between neutrons and protons far from stability, specifically where you have an equal number of neutrons and protons. Um, another aspect is for nuclear astrophysics. Uh, different capture processes require uh, high precision mass measurements to calculate mass difference between nuclei and model these processes so we can better understand how elements heavier than iron were produced. So when I say far from stability, I mean uh, naturally you have, if you look at the periodic table, you have some ratio of uh, neutrons and protons which are the most abundant, which occur here on Earth. And so what we produce here at the lab is exotic ratios of neutrons and protons. So where you have either uh, a lot more neutrons than protons, or in some cases where you have an equal number of neutrons and protons would be an exotic nuclei, depending on the mass. What we measured is we measured, we did uh, high precision mass measurements of 68 selenium, 70 selenium, uh, 70 m bromine, and 71 bromine. And what we discovered is these nuclei are interesting for uh, the RP process, which specifically is the driving uh, capture process behind type 1 x-ray bursts. And the type 1 x-ray bursts, they occur in binary systems where you have a neutron star accreting material from a donor companion star. And when you get enough material and the temperature and density become high enough, you get a burst of luminosity, off of, of, of x-ray luminosity off of these stars. And by measuring these masses, we are better, we're able to better predict the, uh, what this luminosity will look like. And this will help in several different ways. First, you can fit to observation better. And so that would be a long process where you have to take several observations and try different models with different initial parameters. But now that we have some of the, the nuclear physics down, uh, astrophysicists will be able to do this better. And they will be able to get, hopefully, the initial hydrogen content on these stars. And that can be used to determine properties such as the radius of the star, and also to use these um, as standard candles, where you'd be able to measure the distance. I think the next logical step is to push even further out, push even further away from stability. And actually, we have in the works, uh, hopefully in the next two to three months, another measurement planned where we would go out even one nuclei further from stability to try and obtain more data and this would also again help constrain the light curves even more. Uh, and another step would be for uh, astrophysicists to try and take this new data that we, that we obtained and fit uh, observations. So actual experimental data observed from a type 1 x-ray burst and try and model the input parameters. Um, I think it's great that the National Science Foundation provides opportunities for students like me to work at a facility like this, because it gives us experience that we wouldn't be able to obtain anywhere else. Um, I think the cyclotron is really unique in that manner, because I don't think there's a lot of other facilities, at least in the US, where you get as much hands-on access to uh, the through electronics and just the, the workings of a facility uh, like this. NSCL is a world-leading laboratory for rare isotope research and nuclear science education. Operation of NSCL as a national user facility is supported by the Experimental Nuclear Physics Program of the National Science Foundation.